Hello fellow island riders, glad to have you along for the adventure again today. Hope you're having a good day. It is a beautiful day out here on Prince Edward Island here in Montague, down east. Oh my god, Montague beautiful they call it. And uh, I would say that's pretty accurate. <laughs> anyway, what are we getting up to today? Holy smokes, I've been sitting in front of the computer editing all the stuff from New Brunswick and I needed a break, I gotta tell you. Not that I don't like editing, I love it, but sometimes the, you know, the ride calls, man, and we got to get after it. So we've got a few things that we're looking after today. We're going to do a bit of exploring around this area to some spots that I haven't seen before. And we're going to check out a couple, about, about a few objectives, and we're going to look into one story that takes us out to Pamir Island. So that is the number one objective here today, Island Riders, to get to Pamir Island. I'll discuss a little bit about why that's important later on through the ride, but for now... I think the first objective is to find our way down to Wim Road through Campbell Road. Yeah, Montague is a, certainly a pretty spot. So this is another one of those cases where the road that we're after the trail isn't too, too far from town. Bit of a blustery day here today, but I don't think that's gonna get at us too bad. We're looking for Campbell Road right side. We're gonna be moving away from the water to get to the water, if that makes sense at all. But our first objective is Point Pleasant, and I've spotted a really cool way to get down there, but I'm not 100% sure if it's gonna pan out. Oh, heads up, there it is. Too late, I gotta circle back. That's the one we want, 100%. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't take too long to get to a red dirt road here in Prince Edward Island. <laughs> as soon as you get out of town, anytime, really. So this is going to connect us down to Wim Road. I think that's how you pronounce it. But from there, I spotted something really cool on the satellite that kind of looks like a decent little field road run. It's almost looked like a decommissioned road or something. It might be nothing, but I have a route around in case it doesn't pan out. From there, there's a really nice stretch of this kind of stuff that'll take us all the way down towards Pleasant Point. Pleasant Point? Is that what it's called? I think so. Anyway, there I saw some really cool stuff. And what be, might be some potential for a really cool day camp. Because we're getting near lunch a little bit. By the time we get there, I might be getting a little hungry. So it might be worth having a, a look. <laughs> Looks like a private pit. Keep moving. All right, let's see here. Wim Road. Now it's I'm pretty sure it's left side, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be hard to find. We'll stay frosty though. What's this guy up to? Y'all good? You have to go with Elgin McKinnon? No, I don't. I think I found something I was looking for, though. Yeah, you're welcome. Love the bike. I think this is it. Let's just check the maps real quick before we get deep into this. Not it, but it's got the same kind of energy on riders. All right, let's keep pushing. We're going to head down the road. It's a right side like this, but it, yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it pans out. Guy had one heck of a nice bike. Hope he finds what he's looking for. Alright, should be close. Should be close to this curve here. Again, I don't know if this is going to pan out to anything. God, we got to be close. What is this here? Right side, right side. Oh, this has to be it. It smells like it. 100%. This is it. Oh yeah, this is totally it. Awesome! Look at this! beauty of a field run. Oh, 
Oh yeah, look at that though. See it? Horse sign. Going out, coming back though. And it's from today. How do I know it's from today? How do I know that they're going back? Well, shoe face is that way. Shoe face is this way. This one's darker than this one. We had a rain last night and the, the dirt is turned up. Beautiful spot. We'll stay nice and slow regardless. I got a good long line of sight here, but there's no need to just kind of crank it on this one at all, you know what I mean? We don't want to get up face to face with the big old horse. This is awesome though. Please follow the path, obviously. Where else would I go? Through that? No dice. Oh, look at the, the weed is that? Oh, so pretty. See, they're getting ready for another field over there. They're gonna expand. Beautiful through here. You can smell it too, eh? This must be Jack Westaway Road right here. Yeah. That way takes us, let's check out this way. This is neat, this is a lot cooler than I thought it would be. Let's, let's push, let's see what's up here. What is this? Big old irrigation system. Look at that. Oh wow, look at it go, man, look at it go. So cool. Still more horse traffic here. Lots of sand, gotta stay frosty. Put the trail lights on just in case. Okay. So I did see a road back there. I went down through the field, but that's field access. So I'm going to back off. I'm not going to go on that. I really want to see where the rest of this... Ah, no. The, yeah, let's keep pushing towards the objective here. That was awesome. That's an awesome find though. There might be more to that. I'll have to check that out again sometime. I keep saying that to all these places. <laughs> Do I ever come back? Sure, I come back. <laughs> oh, boys. All right, let's move on. Let's keep pushing. We're shooting all day today. That's okay. Perfect. So this should be a nice long line of red dirt to get us down to Point Pleasant here. I love rides like this so much. And they're so easy to put together on PEI. Look at this one. Woo! <laughs> cool. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit of a better side there for you. <laughs> Oh man, I could just feel the energy of that good time. Anyway, like I was saying, I love rides like this. Like I have my red line to Surrey, and then I've got like a couple other runs that are just like this. That just put you on the red dirt for a while. And they're great for like ADV bikes. If you're ever looking for a run like this, 
Island Riders, you're on Prince Edward Island, you're looking for something like this to do, let me know and I'll, I'll root you out something there and send it to you in like a, an Instagram DM or something like that. Because I got a ton of them. I've been stacking them up. Fishing spot? No. Well, maybe. The water's really low right now. Maybe like a springtime thing. So while we continue to cruise down this uh, very easy going, nice and chill, red dirt experience, um, one thing I wanted to like share with you folks is that I found a really, really cool combo, if you will, uh, for hearing protection on the bike. Now, hearing protection is kind of a weird subject because like everybody says, oh, I always wear earplugs, but then there's a lot of people that just that never do. And that used to be me. Um, right up until this season. I only put them in every once in a while. I will say too now, like, I don't have them in now because, you know, I kind of like to hear myself as I'm talking into the microphone. But a lot of the stuff we do is like low speed anyway, short stints. So, um, but I'll put them in on the highway for long runs. Like when we came back from New Brunswick, the whole ride back from basically Adairs to Prince Edward Island, all the earplugs, plus music, yeah. So I've got a new comm system. I got a, uh, a Cardo Freecom 2 Plus. And it's good for a couple riders, which is all I usually get into. And it's been working fantastic for me, but the best thing I've been getting out of it is music with earplugs. And oh my God, it, it's changed things. It's just so much better. I can still hear the engine somewhat. I can hear things that are going on around me, but the music is just so clear. It's such good quality when you connect the earplugs to it. Plus you get the hearing protection, I'll tell you. You know, this last winter I went out to snowblow the driveway. I had the snowblower going, and I wear earmuffs when I, for like ear protection for that too, right? Good ear pro for it. And uh, when I came back in though, I took everything off. I sat down on the chair to watch some TV, and the ringing, you wouldn't believe it. Oh my God, the ringing was bad enough for me to stand up and be like, you know, I gotta do something about this. So I went to, um, I went to a hearing place in Prince Edward Island. And I said, here, have a look at my ears. And they took out probably like a golf ball size of wax for one, <laughs> which helped a lot of things. <laughs> but um, the other thing it did is it really brought me to awareness to like how much I'm like, how much potential damage you can do to your ears without wearing earplugs. So here's the thing. I know that some people who don't wear earplugs don't hear, don't wear them because they like to hear the sound of the engine, right? You want to stay cognizant of what the engine's doing in case you miss something. But you know what? I'll tell you right now, you're not going to miss anything. If you're keeping an eye on your bike on a regular basis, this is going kind of long, this combo, but it's important, I think. Um, if you're doing regular maintenance on your bike, you're pretty you're pretty good. I don't think... If you, even if you heard something wrong with your bike, I, I, I don't know, like... I, I would just recommend you try it, you know? Try it with music. And that might be enough to say, hey, maybe I'm going to start wearing earplugs from now on. And then you get used to it. Because I can tell you right now, I'm totally used to it. And, I, and I'm doing it now on my regular commuting, on the long stints in between these red dirt roads, definitely doing it, you know. And I'll say this too for the for that comm system. I'm not a huge fan of the microphone sensitivity. I really got to like put the microphone down my throat pretty much to get other people to, to hear me. But I will say it has a great auto volume feature. So if you're on the highway, it jacks the volume up so you can hear it. But the minute you get into slow speed maneuvers into town, stops red light brings it right down to a point where you still hear the music but you're hearing the atmosphere around you anyway that's my my spiel on earplugs <laughs> anyway i just wanted to share you know this like i don't know this epiphany that i had you know with with the comm system earplugs combo it's it's a great thing so if you want it if you've thought about earplugs you don't like them check try doing that try doing that and let me know what you think all right let's keep pushing i'm getting sidetracked <laughs> as i do a little bit further here on this old red dirt line, which I'm not, uh, which I which I love, but it ain't. we got to get to that spot here soon. I'm starting to get hungry. I think this is what I want. Ooh, pretty pond. Look at that. 
Yeah, this is what I want. This is what I want. What is this now? So here, I spotted a road in the woods that really just doesn't look like a road. <laughs> it looks like, I don't know what, what it looks like, but it's called Harbor, Harbor Road. But there's no harbor here. There's no harbor here whatsoever. Here, actually, I'll give you a little bit more of a baseline of where we're at. We're up in Murray Harbor area. And, uh, ooh, four wheeling tracks. Somebody's place. But here is like Murray Harbor. And around this area, there's a series of, you know, like, islands and stuff around, but islands and islands, you know what I mean? Oh, that's a beautiful hawk. Uh, I don't know, you probably missed it. But um, one of them is Panmir Island. And I'll say this, when it comes to folks that make their living on the water, and their whole interface to that water is like the harbors and such, the resiliency of those folks is commendable and then some. And I'll say this individual that we're tracking down today, Joe French, long, long passed away. He has a really cool one. Pamir Island did not have a lot of access for boats to get into the water. So what he ended up doing is he found some old wreckage of an old wharf that washed up to shore after a big storm. And he cobbled something together with it. Oh no, that can't possibly be what we're after. <laughs> oh no. Okay, baby. Oh jeez. I'll, I'll discuss it a little bit more. We need to we need to stay a little bit frosty here. Keep our eyes open. I think we're getting close to what we want, but I don't know if what we want is what we really want here today. This is it. This is what I was talking about. Oh, the bushwhack is real. Let's keep pushing. Let's see how far we can go. 